You want to, but I mean, yeah, it's always going to hurt one way or the other, but you don't want moisture in the feedlot deal. It's no, no, bueno. no, it's no, bueno at all. And narrow. that's yeah, exactly. But well, welcome folks. We got a couple people listening. We, we're getting a few more people oh, every time here, George. Good. Oh, cool, and I will try to keep more consistent. My bad, as always. Ah, it's all right. What we uh, we fly by the seat of our pants here. That's what we do, uh, and I, I think anybody that knows us wouldn't expect anything different. So, Bob uh, and Weave. Yeah, that's right. But <clears throat> I, uh, it's been it was a busy week for me. We uh, we got a bunch of bunch of cattle in. We got some, you know, mixed between some. You know, a couple loads of Mexicans, some pretty shitty Mexican cattle. Uh, boy, really? we, oh man, we we pulled hard on them, but uh, I think oh, I think so they'll. Uh, yeah, so I I haven't paid much attention to the market. I, I've I've heard a little bit here and there, but just I I haven't caught up on it. I've been uh, most of my uh, my horseback time has been spent listening to um, a deep dive into the Mormon migration. I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, I think that's really interesting. Oh man, I uh, it, it's some fascinating shit. I, I've got a, uh, I've got a lot of work ahead of me on that one, but I'm gonna do a, like a multi-part series on the Mormons because they're, they're fascinating. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, man. I mean, I'm sure you're learning a lot, and I probably should listen to a lot of that. It's pretty <laughs> cool stuff. Oh man, they have a lot of different stuff going on. I I mean, it's so deep. I don't even know. Oh, it's it's wild. Uh, I don't know. It, but like as crazy as as that whole uh, thing was, like I'm, they're they're different type of people that that come out. But man, you gotta like they they built uh, Salt Lake City in like two years, and uh, I mean they're yeah, just it, pretty pretty incredible people, but. Anyhow, yeah, so no, absolutely because of that, I uh, I've been going in a deep dive there. So I haven't I haven't I, just, I didn't listen to any market reports at all. I don't think so. What what the hell happened last week? How how how'd we fare? You know, uh, that's what I was trying to find some of this deal. Last week was kind of like one of those weeks. Same here a little busier and i'm i think a lot of people are kind of that way like in this the spring cabin people even the fall cabin people with a lot of calves coming out wet coming out of the west and getting ready a lot of stocks start moving from west to east now out of california yeah um i'm not involved in a bunch of that but i think there was a lot of work going on and gonna continue the market um we actually traded a 115 cash market it started 95 earlier than finished 115 national came out and bid them 115 for this last week and then this week i heard of some 115 cash trade in nebraska uh this week already and i know a lot of people are asking 120.25 the kill yeah. slowly starting to pick up uh you know uh, i still think we're seeing some great things on the regional and local side i think every week this persists and we've seen this when we've talked about it mckinley we're seeing great things in these yeah. local markets naturally yeah naturally, that's I that's a good say. thing yeah like market driven is always a better solution you know it, it it really is because then you're you got your your local your regional uh type people that can they they can tailor their market or their ta tailor their kill to fit their market they can go buy to fit their you know tailor their kill but you know it's it's when it's uh when it when it's a uh, born out of the market comes up organically like that that's that's when it's it's good for everybody and that's just what i kind of i'm really liking to see that i mean so like as far as on the on the weekly close i guess the easiest way to do this would be to I'm just going to share this screen for a second. Okay. Um, is, uh, hold on a sec. And all right. Oh, so, just a 10 year weekly close on the third month live cattle. So right now, I believe that's in the uh, October. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. 
but as you can see, last week we had a pretty dang good week. Yeah. You know, opened at 97, finished at 104 at the high of the week. We cut today, we were down a little bit, pretty good hard day, like limit in some months, $3 down, $4 in some feeders. So we were down lower. You can kind of see a 10 year range over here. This, you can see a, this is a big wide range, but in the markets like this, you kind of need to look at these old things. These old trading ranges and see to, to kind of see where we might be going or where the market likes to be. We're pretty comfortable here from 2016 between a buck and let's say a buck 30. Yeah. We drop below that into the 80, which is well below like our 10 year low. And kind yeah. of now we're here testing this support this morning at this $1 range, big range in the fall, just to see if we can maybe we regain that one to 120. Yeah. Uh, range. Maybe we lose that range right there and we got to work into lower territory. I'm not quite, I mean, that's just what the market's doing, kind of flying around right now, but the cash market's staying good. Everybody's hearing about the beef. Um, I think we do still have COVID to fight on many fronts and any time that there's a concentration of people. That's why I think it's almost a necessity that these little guys pick it up and don't let the market take care of them. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, that's and I guess uh, can't be said enough. I know I've emailed my uh, my stupid ass uh, congressman, but uh, go get a hold of your reps and tell them to get behind the Prime Act. Uh, that that will help a lot. That's going to basically what it allows is right now. Uh, a custom processor can sell directly, you know, somebody can bring their cattle in and he can butcher it for them. Uh, the way this deal would set it up is they can go act like one of these bigger packers and go procure cattle and, and sell it uh, to uh, on a custom basis to grocery stores, all that stuff. It, 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 it relieves a lot of the, removes a lot of the red tape off of these, these small and local guys and, and lets them get their product out to market. And uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Like we said before, it's, it's taking away regulation. It's not putting on a mandate. It's, it's a good thing. Get behind it. It's going to be good for all facets of the economy. Yeah, I mean, you can see the market uh, effects taking over and some of that. And I mean, we need large kill facilities too, in a way too. I mean, there's a lot of cattle we need to move yeah. and I think there's a big, so there's gonna be this fine line and, and, and watching us dance it and try to find that solution. There's a lot of good people working towards it, but I think the best thing that's happened is just market factor and yeah. time. Although it's a little slow, like our slaughter levels are lower and they're expected to stay that way as we build up out of this. You know, so I think the opportunity is still going to be there for an, a little bit of time yeah. to do that. But that's what I see. I mean, man, we've talked about a bunch of this stuff, McKinley, but meat demand's definitely good at what level. And then this is unforeseen type of deals and a lot of things. The supply chains mm -hmm. are going to take a serious look at. Yeah. And, uh, but the cattle pricing deal, I mean, it looks like we kind of want, I know the DOJ is, there's 11 or 12 states or something that come after the Packers on price manipulation and stuff, and that's still going on. So there, that's a topic in the market right now. Yeah. Yeah, how, how's that going to work out for us? I, I haven't done uh, much. <laughs> I haven't done much uh, research onto that, but... I haven't I, I can't speak too loudly either on either side of it. I don't know. Uh maybe they're doing some things that is pretty good. Like I said, the market kind of did take a step up. Maybe it did scare the Packers into a little bit of that deal. Yeah. Uh, so maybe there's something to it on these box beef prices. Then again, I'm not real sure. Makes me I mean, there's the it's hard because there's some cattle ready right now with nowhere to go, just like these pigs. Mm. and everything else and there is that serious issue 
And I think that's why it's stringing so much high nerves uh, and lives are on the line, not only livestock lives, but yeah, human human financial lives lives and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a weird time right now. Like uh, shit get is getting kind of like there, there's some, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, you know, there's some States starting to open back up, but you know, there is still a lot of that underlying tension. I, this, this, uh, there's going to be some shit to be reckoned with when this is all said and done. And I, I don't know where it's headed, but. I, well, that's, I know. And I mean, we go back to cattle marketing. I mean, I do want to tell a little bit my Lobo livestock video for any forward contracting that anybody wants to do. Um, contact me, hit me up on Facebook or on the website. But uh I think there's going to be chances within this market to take your chance, market your calves, or figure out ways to do your math on the cost of carry of your calves Mm. and how you're going to place them. And I think it's not too early to just start thinking about that and using kind of the futures market and some of this other stuff to kind of mitigate your way through this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You know, take every opportunity you can. Yeah, because they're going to be there. You know, there are them just kind of just, I think we do have a lot better times coming in the last next couple, three years. And part of it might be due to inflation, too. You never know. You yeah. know what I mean? Because commodity price inflation with what's going on around, I think, has a good chance of coming true. No, I, I think so. It's, uh, Man, when when you uh, when you pump that much uh, more money into the economy, it's it's bound to inflate, you know, quite quite a little bit. So <laughs> we we got uh, we we got that coming too. So it it's uh it's it's a weird time, but um, I don't know what what else uh, you I, said you've been branding all weekend, huh? Yeah, we were branding, getting some pairs ready, sold some pairs, and got some pairs. Uh, going to different parts of the country, get some good uh, catalogs, some good customers there. So working on that, then we're going to get ready to kind of get branded big time and then uh, a- start ready for synchronizing AI. Nice. And so, I mean, I know a lot of the people around are kind of in that stage and it's nice to catch a little breath of uh, fresh rain and it's kind of nice to do the work and and some people are a little worried about it getting dry, and it's a decent worry. So I'm hoping the rain comes for them at the right time so we can just keep on grinding through. Because really, just do the work as best you can. Kind of enjoy that. Cause, and like we were talking about earlier, to take our chances, and we'll have our chance on the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh... – boy, it's a, it's a good time of year. Like, I, I love this time of year. It just – you know, it's still cool in the mornings. It's, uh, but you know, it's warming up nice. Calves are feeling good. You know, it's just, yeah. Horses it's got some time. fire to them. You know, it's, it's just a good time of year. I, I like it. It is. It's good. I didn't kind of enjoy it and enjoy this. I think still think you kind of embrace the slow down to it, to an to extent. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like it was right away. I think we can have a little patience and taking it in there and kind of seeing what becomes of it because I think there's going to be some changes, but it might be some things that might benefit us. Yeah. So are you guys going back to a weekly sale or are you going bi-weekly still? Still bi-monthly. So two – and so like – yeah, I'm that's having what a I mean. Friday sale this time, and Friday we're gonna have that level livestock featuring Diamond Peak breeding stock plus 50 bulls. Okay, uh, but also we're having another. I'm level livestock's have taken other consignments in, and so we're gonna have a full on feeder way cow bull sale. Then we're gonna start the feature sale with the bred animals. We're gonna cool. have pairs on video FOB the ranch and yearling breeding heifers and bulls ready to turn out and breed and. That'll be exciting. That'll be fun. That, and then we'll have our next sale May 27th. Okay, cool. So then it'll just be every other week. And we'll see what the weather's like in June. And and probably if the weather holds on and gives a little moisture in July, we might only have one that 
that month or yeah you know but then starting august probably almost middle of august will probably go every week then all the way yeah the end of fat. there'll be a lot of cattle moving yeah so yeah. i think that's how it kind of get to get there cool well you know it's uh it it's uh if, if the market if they're if the market ain't moving you you can't you can't sell so you know you gotta you gotta <laughs> go you gotta go with the with the market so i don't want to fight it you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. i want to be people be ready about their marketing decisions not be forced into something yeah take the time let's build let's prepare organize it you know what i mean and we can do a good job marketing yeah absolutely yeah uh well that's good i uh i i'm glad to see you guys are still hanging in there after that you know boy these sale barns took a hit during this whole deal and uh i don't know if a lot of people realize that uh you know even within the the cattle industry you know i don't think a whole lot of people realize it but you know it's yeah like you said anytime when you've got you know you know medium to large groups of people you know running right around next to each other sale barn <laughs> pretty good example of that you know it's yeah. uh that, that that always raises the risk so it's uh it's just uh yeah everybody everybody's taking a hit so i mean there, there ain't any any facet of this industry that hadn't been hit i know a lot of people like to talk about the profit margins of the packers but man when <laughs> when they're if they're up and running, they're only running at half half capacity, and uh, and a lot of a lot of places are shut down completely. Uh, I don't care what the the box beef price is, but if you can't if you can't push the your normal amount of cattle through there, you ain't making money. So it's uh, there hasn't a, a single facet of this industry or this economy that hadn't been affected. Absolutely. Absolutely, like you said, and even the volume on these slower kills is pushing the volume slower into the feedlot placements, which is once again making uh, receipts lower yeah. through these auction barns. And like you said, it's hurting every piece of the whole pie. And so we're all just going to have to try to figure out how to get, and we know there's going to be cattle marketings later on and i think the individual producer is right now being creative in how to carry his cattle and market into a different time you know right now as we speak they're probably got their pencil out and they're figuring it out and so we'll be right there to help them and when it's time to sell cattle we'll be there to sell cattle in, in numerous ways now and our online presence is really picking up through this so i think we're going to gain some buyers through that Good. coming into the fall you know oh, yeah yeah and and you're you're still trying to to get as many uh fed cattle as you can through there to to kind of help prop up some of these these local guys too and that's in regionals and that that's awesome i uh you know that the, the more you know that's that's the whole fight uh going on right now is uh getting these guys to bid more uh cash sales on on cattle and that that's a good start is just a couple head here and there going through a sale barn and uh you know it just it's not much to start with but it builds uh that fire keeps building and the next thing you know it just really opens stuff up and i'm trying to connect people that you know like that every little piece can help so i'm trying to connect the people that have a retail demand already that they started before that maybe they're having trouble volume. Well, I can get the volume of cattle and then trying to connect all the pieces, no different than the, they do on the big processing types. Yeah. But then just let all these individuals make money in their individual way, but kind of in a group, but not a group. So, you know what I mean? They can guarantee the volume for me they can sell it all of a sudden you're staying more local regional the local guy processes it mm. and then the consumer gets product that's regionally produced and processed yeah it's it's uh it's a good deal people helping people it's a beautiful thing it's cool <laughs> it's a beautiful thing <laughs> oh come on we know this since vincey vaughn oh know? yeah oh yeah it's, it's a beautiful thing but I, I think that's cool. Uh, it's um, 
Yeah, I, I think that's where the the industry like can start making steps in the right in the right way. Is just it, you don't have to have this great big mandate or uh, you know this this plan that's foolproof until it's implemented and then it just goes to hell and that's that's typically how these big these big idea deals go but if if it just sometimes it takes one or two guys or gals just doing something a little bit different and it catches on and next thing you know it just it snowball effect and um Mm -hmm. and so that that that's that's one of the big reasons why i've been pounding the table for the direct to consumer because the market is there for that and uh and it's a good way to diversify your your operation just a little bit you don't have to it doesn't take a huge undertaking to to start shifting in that direction but the it's overall it's just a drop in the bucket in the beef supply but it just it can change a lot of a lot of things over time and it may it may take a few years but it just when it comes from a grassroots level it's a, that's a that's a good thing because it's it's just people at reacting to the market. Yeah, like I said, we still need to process a lot of cattle in a big way. We're going to figure out how to do that, what it looks like going forward. But I think, like I really think in how it worked, there's the direct-to-consumer model, and there's all that. I love that, and I also love, like, coming here, going through the barn with some of your finished animals, that picks up by the processor. Mm-hmm. The processor has some deals with you know, little retailers, or maybe you. You go back and get the meat from your processor, yeah. sell it retail your way, and then you're just keeping everybody included in that region, and everybody's kind of winning too, you know. And they're using the efficiencies of each party too. Well, and that that same dollar, that one dollar circulates through the local economy you know five six seven times before it it, you know goes on out into the larger larger scale economy you know it's it's a good thing it's uh it's just um yeah it's it just makes sense you know uh you know any anything you can do to uh to make money on your end if it if it benefits somebody else there's gonna be you know, there's going to be a market for you. You just got to go find it. That's the thing. And whether it be like a cooperative or a, a regional type deal or direct to consumer, you know, you just, you know, the big thing is, yeah. uh, or your local barn. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's something that you, you got to be creative. You got to figure, figure something out, go work with your local sale barn, go talk to George and ask him, uh, what kind of market we got for this? What, what kind of, what kind of, program can we set up you know um <clears throat> george is pretty easy guy to talk to so and if, if you're not in the in the loma area go talk to your to your local regional sale barn you know you know those guys those guys know what 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 the market's doing they know they know they got they've got their ear to the ground so uh yeah, it's cool that yeah it puts you in the right direction to help you and like it maximize your margin time of marketing of which weights and different things just to like you said just have a conversation yeah exactly yeah and uh we got a couple comments justin yeah we mentioned it before but yes we we are 100 percent in favor of the the prime act that's uh, that's a good thing yes. it's a good thing call your call your representatives uh tell them like that 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 should be a very easy vote i'm sure it's not going to be but that's one that should be a very easy vote um it's it's nothing but good for for local economies in general so um for me go go call your reps and tell them to to get behind the prime act but um yeah it's it's crazy i i just i enjoy watching how um i don't know how have, have you ever uh done any reading into austrian economics george no i haven't you should uh you should look into it. it's um okay it's a very kind of simplified uh i'm you know like it, it all boils down to that the economy is made up of humans and humans mm-hmm. act in their in their own self-interest for you know 99.9 yes. percent of the time and uh and so basically they're the way they're saying is like all these models, you know, like that they, they, they use to make these, uh, 
you know, supply and demand curves and, and projections and everything, it's all, uh, the numbers don't ever tell the whole story because, because it's all nuanced because humans are acting in their own self-interest. So it, it's, 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 <laughs> yes. it's, uh, but it, it's all, it's kind of one of those deals where that is why central planning always fails was because there's no <laughs> man or group of men or women alive that could possibly know everything about everything and plan it out. <laughs> like, there's exactly. just no way possible. But when, uh, when you've got somebody like you, who's kind of the hub of uh, the cattle business in Western Colorado, uh, oh, shit. you know, like you, you, you've got, uh, you've got the diamond peak deal going where you, you've got yeah. a lot of cattle out there. Then you've got, you got cattle on yeah. feed, you've got your sale barn. Like you, you're pretty intimately com- connected into the market and you, you've yes. got a better, yes. a way better sense of what is going on in the overall market than a, a lot of these, you know, big economists that are, are making projections and stuff uh yeah, really do and it's not so much that you uh you've got the you know you probably you don't a have Harvard the ed- education yeah you don't have the education those guys do but you've got you've got your finger on the pulse of the of the cattle economy in western colorado deal. yeah so it's like it's stuff like that that uh yeah you know, it's it's interesting so like that's some of your best resources is to just go some somewhere locally because you know these if, if there's something big happening in the in the southern plains that it may not have, it's not going to affect you up in uh in in craig and loma uh, uh, to the same extent it's going to affect somebody in dalhart texas you know it's a uh, you know it, it's 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 all nuanced i guess you know that's it's different everywhere so you're you know a lot right. of times your your local sale barns the one of your better resources uh just to go find stuff out absolutely and i gotta look into that austrian austrian economics yeah but it's that's, but pretty interesting that's cool and like you said come by the sale bar and ask about the market going on there and like you said that's a good feel and i really kind of see that going back more as the volatility's up and down and trying to find a market is hard and that's kind of the function of a pub public auction yard if you will yeah is like trying to find a market it's a live auction with market bidders yeah and people offer and then you've got people bidding against each other and so it is like the truest form of capitalism right there it's just uh <laughs> It, it really is. It's uh, and and you're probably gonna have some shit days, but you know if if you play yes. it right and if you if you if you know how to market, you know how to how to play your timing and whatnot, you can you can make a pretty good living at it. But you know it, you're you're gonna have some of those shit days. It just it's gonna happen. It's just gonna. It is. It is. That's it. And that's like that's the. The other good part, McKinley, about uh, coming to like our uh, market with, say, me, Love Livestock, or any sale barn or, or other uh, marketing agencies, if you will, like your like your check, the custodial account that we have covers the seller's funds, so it guarantees you sell cattle. You get paid even if I don't, if you will. You know, it's yeah. my responsibility to collect the funds, and that's. I think that's the not little known fact, but I think that's the cheapest part of the commission. Yeah, is the guarantee to payment. You know, especially when you people do private treaty country deals. Mm-hmm. You know, you get you know you save some money on commission. <coughs> I get all that. But the collection of funds and the guarantee that that check is there for you that day when I leave, I think that's a big deal, especially in these markets right now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, no, it's it's a uh, the, the sale barns. Uh, it's a vital part of the of the industry, and um, yeah, I think it's good to. Uh, good to support your you know your your local auction house it, it just whether whether it's just to go watch cattle and eat a burger you know whatever <clears throat> whatever the case may be that's yep. that's that's still a pretty good morning yep pretty i like it dude 
Hell yeah. What else is hey, well, out? S- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, man. I was just going to see what's uh, what else is new up in your neck of the world. Dude, like I said, Dom, I mean, the rain's been good. And it's not been, I mean, we're pretty sitting pretty good up here, luckily. And like I said, we've kind of talked about the market and what to expect going forward. Could be a decent cash market on the fat end and maybe some stabilization. But, uh, but around here, around Western Colorado, a lot of people are turning out where they can yeah, and getting ready to go to the forest. And I'm sure making their final cuts and all branded and kind of getting bred up up close while they're down low. And then going to turn out and then probably worry about their hay, I yeah. would imagine, you know. How's the water looking over there this year? Here with me, real good. Uh, other places, maybe not as good. I think irrigation, though, as the most part from snowpack is going to be pretty good. Irrigated irrigation water, I think, is going to stay pretty steady. Uh, some of that big snow went in the ground a lot faster than people thought. Uh, so that there, there's some things that need to watch. But I think as far as right now, the irrigation water is good for a little bit cool yeah they uh i think it's it's shaping up to be a little bit dry here the you know the sierras didn't get quite the snowpack that they have in the last couple years but they they got a big snow kind of towards the end of march uh was it then i think it was like the end of march somewhere around there um and so that helped but not still wasn't quite the snowpack they were expecting but i I don't don't think it's going to be terrible but yeah it's um that, no it could be worse <laughs> could be worse oh heck yeah man exactly there's something else we're gonna watch week by week mm, for sure i i think uh as as uh as these states start to open back up a little bit and then um you know and i think i think eventually like there's gonna be some confidence back uh in you know, in those, in the labor force for the Packers too, you know, like that, that's a lot of the problem they had is, you know, even though uh, Trump put them under the defense, uh, whatever the defense act was um, there, one of their big problems was just people not wanting to go back to work because they were scared. But I think, uh, I think the more and more that the, the numbers come out and, you find out that probably a whole lot more people had this thing than uh, than we realized because a lot of them were asymptomatic. Um, I think confidence is going to build up and uh, and you're going to see uh, see a return to the workforce. That the good thing about this economic downturn is it was uh, like the the demand didn't really go anywhere. You know, the demand was always there. It was just forced shutdown. So. I think I think it'll take a little bit, but I think I think we'll, things will be up and humming, uh, you know, before we know it. So, I and maybe that's yeah. a high in the sky outlook. But I, I think I think things are starting to. I think we've kind of turned the corner, and uh, I think I wouldn't totally. I mean, I think there's still going to be some. As far as recovery goes, I think the processing plants come back online and do start killing slowly. Like I said, I think it takes a while to get it back to full kill just because implementing these all these new protocols mm-hmm. and the different state governors in which they have to work. I do see it a little different on the comeback as I see it a little different. I don't know what to expect, but I mean, it's so hard to call, but... I would say slaughter levels. I think they fig- we figure out a way to kill more cattle. Yeah. Uh, as we get maybe all the way to the end of July, first part of August, you know? Yeah. So we might have to stretch cattle that long. Like you said, there's going to be confidence. There's going to be stuff that slash our confidence as we go. Going to be a tug of war, I think. I, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think – I think though we're in a little better shape than we were in like oh eight, you know, where you yeah. know, pe- a lot of people have just lost everything, and that was that was truly like just the bottom falling out of the market. Where you know, can't say that it didn't happen with the with the cattle industry, but 
you know, the overall as the, as the economy, I think, uh, I think we're a lot stronger footing than we were <clears throat> in, in 08 maybe, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I think, I think we're kind of yeah. turning the corner though. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a long road, but I think we're, I think we're starting to get back on, you know, in the right direction anyways. Yeah. Like I said, I, I don't know where speculate on any of this, but like you said, I think easiest thing to do is see what you can do in your own operation and then just kind of take these current events, kind of take with a grain of salt and they just keep grinding through and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all we can do. Uh, all, what, what else you could do is you can go over to burning-daylight.com and you can vote yeah. on this uh, Western Movies uh, May what Madness bracket. There on there? Um, let's see. Let me pull it up real quick. Um, we had quite a few people voting. Um, but, you know, it's typical first-round action. You know, the, the yeah. heavy hitters are cleaning up. Uh, a couple upsets. Um, but really? mostly that's because my, my cousin did a, a really shitty job drafting teams. He, 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 uh, he has very little respect for the, the older, uh, older Westerns. So, really? yeah, so he picked that's, a lot of, that's, that's a shame. I know. Well, it's, he's an idiot, so it's all right. Uh, <laughs> he, he had, uh, he picked a bunch of more modern, movies over some uh some of the old classics really Are you uh, about like john waynes yeah so what? uh they, we got some people that want to want to hear your takes so i'll i'll yeah, go i want to i want to i want to give it i'm excited okay so we got the cowboys versus the hateful eight cowboys yes sir cowboys is up 76 24 right now so Doing okay. good. Uh, we got eight seconds okay. versus the rounders. I hate that matchup in the first round. That's bullshit matchup. <laughs> I mean, that seating right there is terrible. That is a classic eight both... nine matchup. Oh man. Oh man. Jeez. Oh Friday. I don't even. Look, I'm going to have to go. This is bad because it's so tight, but I'm going eight seconds. Well, I think it's 75, 25, eight seconds right now. And uh, I yeah. think <clears throat> I think I picked the rounders. I thought it'd be but but I, uh, that's a, that was a tough one. That was an 8-9 matchup. Mine was a lot closer. And set, my choice was like, I mean, it was right there between having the five of myself on that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then we got Django Unchained versus Maverick. Maverick. All uh, right. Maverick's up seventy-one twenty-nine. Okay. Uh, McClintock and the new three ten to Yuma. McClintock. Yeah, that's that's cleaning up sixty-two thirty-eight. That's a little closer. Okay. And we and got it should be farther. We got Good, the Bad, and the Ugly versus Angel and the Bad Man. I'm going Good, Bad, Ugly on that one. Yeah, that's a one one seed versus sixteen seeds, so okay, uh, nine ninety to ten on that one. So uh, okay. <clears throat> then we got Hang 'Em High versus a Horse Whisperer. That's pretty pretty easy one, I'd have to say. That and Hang 'Em High. Yeah, see, horse whisper. That see, that's that's a Robbie pick. The guy's an idiot. So <laughs> <clears throat> there, that's seventy four twenty six right now. Then we got Quigley Down Under versus Little Big Man. That's a five twelve matchup. I'm, I gotta go Quigley. Yeah, Little Big Man's a great movie, but Quigley's Quigley's one of the all time greats. So that's ninety five to eight. five. Little big man just ran up against a tough opponent right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Caught him when they're hot. It's just, uh, it's not a good matchup for him. No. Uh, well, had a lot of people like that comment. Uh, fistful of dollars <laughs> versus the uh, magnificent seven. 
Uh, and this is, I believe, the original Magnificent <sighs> Seven. I'm going with the original Ma Magnificent Seven, which is really close. And this is even, I'm fighting with myself here, but that's what I'm going to go with right now. Well, it's, you, it's hard to go. I'm, Fistful of Dollars is awesome. But Magnificent Seven is not just one of the greatest Westerns, but it's one of the greatest movies ever made in general. <laughs> yeah. It really it's is. so good. So, yeah. yeah, so we got 57-43. That's a close one. Uh, is. And I, I think I think that that's about right. That's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to go agree. Magnificent Seven. So this one is a – next one's a total blowout. Uh it's the shootest versus Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Shootest. It oh, should yeah. be a blowout. Oh, my God. It should be a blowout. 95 to 5. And now we've got a uh, one seed versus a 16 seed. And this was my 16 seed. It was a throwaway pick. But we got Tombstone versus Fievel Goes West. Because if there's going to be a cartoon <laughs> western, it has got to be Fievel Goes West. <laughs> <laughs> I I appreciate you put it on there, and I think so does Fievel. Yeah, I, and I, 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 you, you, know, you can't vote against Tombstone on that. No, no, I go Tombstone, <laughs> but I think it's like a respect, and I think the respect is warranted. Yeah, to Fievel goes west just for making the list. Oh, I think, I think so. A lot of people, I think yeah, that, I, I like that. I, I watched that movie many, many times growing up, so uh, I I had to throw it throw it on there. There's there's a bunch of movies that should have made the list that didn't, but you know you got to have fun with the last couple of rounds. Uh, Absolutely. This one's kind of like surprising. It. This is another close up close matchup. We got the Cowboy Way versus Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's a tough Ooh. tough matchup. Really tough, tough matchup. I'm going Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid. Well, that's the consensus right now. It's at 57-43, so uh, we're we're it's in, tough. That's uh, but I love. I look, think the that's, Cowboy Way offers good comedy and a little bit of drama, but actually, the the Butch Cassidy offers maybe better comedy mm. with a better storyline. Butch Cassidy is a good show. Cowboy Way is a great movie. Uh, deserved great. to be in the in the bracket, I think. Great. Probably also oh, yes. fitting that it's a it's a first round exit. Um, I think that's probably about right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we got <clears throat> this is another Robbie pick. Uh, we got Monty Walsh versus Jonah Hex, and um, Monty Walsh. Yeah, and that's actually – it's a little closer than I figured it would be. It's 85-15. Um, I'm guessing Robbie made like three accounts just so he could vote for Jonah he Hicks three to. times. It <laughs> should be under to zero. I know. I, mean, I, I would. Mean. I'm, I'm a little more disappointed that Fievel didn't get any votes. Uh, if Fievel uh, – that, that is – you know it's fake accounts. Yeah. Because your listeners are better than that. I think so. This, this is all a Robbie conspiracy. <laughs> Add that to the list of conspiracies we're talking over. Tell him William Barr is going to be after his Oh, last. yeah. He is coming right down on your ass. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, – I guess I could just share this on the on the screen here. But we've got – True Grit, the original True Grit versus uh, Wild Wild West. That was also a 16 pick. The original True Grit. Yeah. So that's not even a, uh, a competition there, but. No. Nope. Um, and 86, 50, or 86 to 14 on that one. Then we got the new True Grit versus the High Low Country. I know you're a fan of the High Low Country, George. I love oh high low country. I take that right now. The new true grit, fitting that it goes out first round. I would <laughs> I took five will goes west over that making the list any day. <laughs> you're not a Hot fan of the new, right now. You're not a fan of the new true no. grit. Uh, -uh. that's <laughs> when they drew left alone. I I see that argument, but I uh, if it had been anybody <laughs> besides the dude, I probably would have hated it, but. Uh, no, I, I love I, I love Jeff Bridges. It's still it's still no mad respect to the dude. Yeah, 
then we've got Dances with Wolves versus the Three Amigos. I mean, I got to take Dances with Wolves there and leaving alone my thoughts of Costner at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just judging the. Yeah. The Three Amigos is a good show, but it, it, I mean, come on. It's. They're they're overmatched, out outgunned. <laughs> way way outgunned. Way outgunned. El Wapo style outgunned. <laughs> and no. we, that was, what is that? It's eighty six fourteen on uh, on Dances with Wolves to Three Amigos. Then we've then got we haven't done Unforget or are you going across horizontal? Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so then we got. We got No Country for Old Men versus The Man from Snowy River. I'm going Man from Snowy River. That's uh, That was a, a tough one for me. I went No Country for Old Men uh, strictly for because of Tommy Lee Jones. Um, but that was that was the coin flip. It was uh, like, who's the yeah. who's uh, the best actor? And I went with Tommy Lee Jones there. I can't disagree with that. But it could have went either way. Both great movies. I can't uh, dis- both really, good, really good movies. This one I'm a little surprised by. Not so much that the outlaw Josie Wales is winning, but Once Upon a Time in the West didn- has not got a single vote. I get it. That's a that's a powerhouse you're going against. That's the number one seed you're going against in the outlaw Josie Wales. But I figure that uh, Once Upon a Time in the West would get a few votes. I mean, obviously, uh, I. I, I I didn't vote for it, but you know it's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought somebody would. I, I I don't disagree with you. I just think it's it was like you want to vote for that movie, but the matchup is just is just too great. No, like that's. Uh, you know that's like that's like. Doesn't matter how much money you're putting down on that; it's always gonna lose. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter it's how you against the movie. No, you can you can church it up all you want. You can uh you can plead your case <laughs> and make the best possible case, but you're still a going against the fucking outlaw Josie Wales. You're not it's gonna win that tough. one. <laughs> you're not gonna win too that tough. one. Uh then we've got for a few dollars more versus Pale Rider. I'm going for a few dollars more on this one. Uh, this one also kind of surprised me. Pale Rider's up sixty forty right now. I figured uh, I figured it'd be flip flopped. I, I figured it'd be like fifty five forty five. I, uh, I that's voted an for. That's in the making, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it is. That's a I think because, a six eleven matchup. Ooh, because I'm telling you, I don't, a few dollars more should should win that game, but we'll see. Yeah. So then we've got the Missouri Breaks versus Fort Apache. It'd been forever since I'd seen the Missouri Breaks. I watched it again the other day. Fucking excellent movie. Jack Nicholson killed it. Marlon Brando was weird as fuck in that movie, but he was awesome. It's a good movie. Uh, I can't believe Ford Apache's winning. I'm Missouri Breaks all day. That should kill it. This is this is they're good. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Ford Apache's a good show, but I mean, I think it's outdated. I it's, get it. Uh, I get it. Yeah. Uh, Come on, man. I yeah, mean, Missouri, Missouri breaks. Boy, I, really, I hope it come, pulls a comeback because I really I do like too. that. They got – well, uh, voting will end at 5 Pacific time on uh, Thursday, and then we'll announce the, who moves on to the round of 32 on uh, Thursday evening during the bull session. But, yeah, Missouri breaks is – they're kind of shit in the bed right now. 72 28 they're losing so maybe they'll make a comeback i hope so i do too this one also a little bit of uh of an upset well it's a big upset in the rankings but uh i'm a little surprised by it. high plains drifter versus hondo two two powerhouse going right there but hondo's ahead and, uh, and I, I'm taking Hondo on this one too. Oh man, you're you're going with uh, the I, underdog. I I picked High Plains you know, Drifter, but I tell you what, I think Hondo's of in my bracket. Hondo would be a favorite 
over High Plains Drifter. That's why I think that's a give me easy money pick. Hondo probably winning two rounds, not just this one. Ah, uh, call. If you they're taking out, first. if they're taking out High Plains Drifter in the first round, they can they can make a run. They can yeah. make a run. Um, Hondo set up to make a run. We got, and then we've got Unforgiven two seed versus Rio Grande eight or uh, fifteen seed. Rio Grande, like John Wayne's old school movie. Yeah. I'm taking it. You're taking Rio Grande, all right. I know. I'm, it's. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a little a bit show. of a hot take, but I like it. I uh, I think think because of that, um, Rio Grande's eh, they're kind of holding their own. Um, but you know, when you got a two seed versus a fifteen, and when you're you're going against Unforgiven, that's a it's a pretty it's tough, tough matchup. Uh, I respect the I respect your choice though. I I chose Unforgiven. Um, that that's a it's a masterpiece. I uh, agree. It's a really good movie. Really uh, this good. this one is uh might be our closest one yet. No, we've got a fifty fifty one coming up. But all the pretty ver- horses versus uh, Hell or High Water. All the pretty horses. That's just that shows real good. It's deep. I can't I'll hardly watch it all the way through, but oh, it's good. It's a good show. Hell or Wa- High Water is a great show. That's uh, a yeah. one of the better modern westerns that they've put put out in the last uh, several years. Um, I agree. Yeah, I'm not surprised by the by the results. Pretty close matchup. All the pretty horses up 55 45 right now. Uh, yeah. And we're going Rio cool. Bravo, Cimarron. I'm going Rio Bravo. Yeah, it's hard on that to, one. Hard to go against D- Dean Martin and John Wayne. That's a come on, and Ricky Nelson. Yeah, I forgot about Ricky Nelson. Purple eyes, buddy. Purple <laughs> eyes. Yeah, I, that's stacked. Yeah. So that, and we got seventy nine twenty one Rio Bravo over Cimarron right now. Uh, closest matchup. As of yet, Jeremiah Johnson versus uh, Young Guns. And it's probably the closest matchup because it's the hardest one for me, too. I mean, yeah. I've heard so far. Wow. And two totally different movies oh, in yeah. Westerns. I mean, yeah. if you want to talk about the different ends of Western spectrum, it's in this game right here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with movies I watch when I get in a tough spot like this. Uh, I go with movies that I kind of watch more on the VHS at the Buckley, the ones I kind of reenacted more, mm. packing my six guns, and that's gonna have to be Young Guns. So I'm going Hell with yeah. Young Guns on this choice. And George was like, Emilio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or that's the big. Did you see the size of that chicken? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> Young Guns did not make the initial list. We added it back in because uh, it was one of – there's so many good Westerns. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of the ones that got tough. left off is just because we forgot about them. Like, there's just so many good ones. Um, but Young Guns well, was one yeah, that got I... left off, and then we like, you know, I, I forget who remembered it, and we're like, oh, we're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, go throw – you got to throw Young Guns in there. Yes. Middle seed somewhere. Yes, I I agree that, but I agree about how tough it could have been. Boy, oh yeah, oh it, it was it was brutal. So then we got uh, another one seed, one versus sixteen. with Sons of Katie Elder versus A Million Ways to Die in the West. That's pretty pretty obvious one there. Yeah, Sons <laughs> of Katie Elder. I mean, that's Sons of Katie Elder. I mean, it would it would match up in a championship game. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, it's, it's a loaded solid with one actors seed. too. Yeah, that's a solid one seed. Uh, this one we're going uh, old school comedy versus the first uh, the first Western movie I think uh, ever, or at least the one or first one was sound, I believe, is what it was. So we got Blazing Saddles versus The Virginian. It's a tough matchup for the Virginian. I don't know if I'd have picked the Virginian 
There's any move, any, I think I might have put Fifeville Goes West over the Virginian. And that's opinions that you didn't ask for, but I just gave you that. The <laughs> Blazing Saddle is my choice. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't disagree. I, this one was just, uh, the Virginian was, Virginian was strictly uh, a pick just to pay homage to, you know, the, them being the trailblazers of the Western genre. Yes. I but okay. that, that being said, you're, you're not going to take out Blazing Saddles. No, I don't think so. Oh, and we got another 50-50 matchup coming. This is a good one. Shanghai Noon versus the Shadow Riders. And I think that Shadow Riders should – I'm Shadow Riders all the way. Not even in comparison. I'm going to take back my Virginian comment. I think <laughs> I picked Virginian over Shanghai Noon. <laughs> Why are you such a Shanghai <laughs> Noon? <laughs> Come on, Owen Wilson and Jackie ah! Chan. Is, it is a great show. <laughs> okay, all right. I'd be a little hard on it. <laughs> and I'd also pick Five Pokemon's West over it, just to be clear right now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, we, then we got Shane versus Silverado. Mm, I'm going to go. This is. Not he. I mean, not overly enthusiastic about either choices, but I'd go with Shane. Yeah, I uh, I didn't like this matchup all the way around. I, I wish Shane would have went up against something like the Virginian because they're both old. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Shane, I, I don't know how many people out there still remember Shane. I the only reason I remember it is because I we had to watch it in uh english class in high school maybe junior high even and uh and i i recognize that it was a a very well done movie it's just one of those ones that doesn't hold up very well over time uh and silverado was okay at at best and i agree i just think both of those don't have much of a chance next round no, they're whoever whoever wins out. Silverado's up pretty big right now. They'll probably they'll probably go down in round two. Um, this was a good two fifteen matchup. Uh, the scores reflect reflect it pretty accurately. But uh, open range city slickers. Open range is going to run away with that one. But city slickers pretty solid choice to make the tournament. I think. Dude, and see here's where I'm going to be a little bit against the grain. I'm City Slickers right here. Perfect. Against open Range. <laughs> I am. I'm City Slickers right here. And I love Open Range. Yeah. But a guy's got to make a choice. And I think City Slickers offers more in a weirder way, uh, a more unique type of Western with your Billy Crystal. It's well, a breath of fresh air. It's kind of like a Western mixed with uh, – it's. It's kind of like a John Wayne mixed with uh, like a little bit of Blazing Saddles mixed with a little bit of Indiana Jones, and uh, yeah. it's just awesome. I like it. It's 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 a good show. <laughs> uh, then we got the Alamo versus Conagher. This is a pretty close matchup too. John Wayne, the this Alamo, a, and that's why I'm going with Alamo. And but Conagher, ooh. Hold on a second. I'm going Conacher. Conacher is a good movie. Yep. It's a Louis L'Amour. Yep. It was one of the most uh, commented movies when I I put up all the all the posts advertising this deal and uh, out outside of uh, Lonesome Dove, which we left off because it's a mini series. Once again, it's a mini series. Yeah. And it would yeah. win hands down. It wouldn't even be a contest. So we we had to let everybody else fight it out. Lonesome Dove just yeah. gets the the name of the tournament. Uh, but the the next probably the next most commented one was Conagher. As well, calm down. We haven't made the bracket yet. So Conagher makes it. Uh, they're down right now, but that's a close matchup. Fifty eight forty two. I want to give my vote to Conagher on this one. Probably my only vote against John Wayne, maybe ever. But <laughs> Conagher is a better movie in this regard. Yeah, uh, it's a good it's a good show. 
Uh, next, we got the Searchers versus the new Magnificent Seven, I believe. Then I'm the Searchers there. Yeah, I think, uh, man, that that would be uh that'd be a brutal matchup. Oh, that is no, this is the Magnificent Seven. Is the original original Magnificent Seven versus the Searchers? Jesus, <laughs> you want to talk about a brutal? It's a brutal that's matchup. Terrible. Yeah, those are both unreal. Like the the actors in both of those movies for that time. Yeah, and I'm gonna go with the Searchers because Ed Margaret. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Holy. so we're gonna have to go back to Fistful of Dollars versus the new Magnificent Seven. That should be flipped on its I head. Know. Fistful of Dollars should be running away with that matchup. Yeah, absolutely. There we got a if bunch of new, new movie new homers. Match. That's what we got. I don't even understand. Have they even seen an old western? Because if they had, they would not vote like this. Seriously, I who the hell is taking? I, I like Chris Pratt. I'm, I I hear that the new Magnificent Seven was was pretty good. I haven't watched it, but Fistful of Dollars, come on. John Wayne and his spaghetti western heyday, get the fuck out of here. I don't even want to hear that. Yeah. Why. I don't even want to hear reasoning behind that vote. No. I just don't. No, there, there's no, there's no reasoning. There's no reasoning. Uh, there isn't. Our final matchup, we've got the Wild Bunch versus the man who shot Liberty Valance. The Wild Bunch. Yeah, that's the 70-30. That's the, not... the matchup now. And, I mean, the man who shot Liberty Valance, I get it why it's leading. I'm yep. not choosing it. It's not my choice. I like the Wild Bunch in this scenario, but I will – sit and watch the man who shot Liberty Valance, Valance and as well. The, that was also one of those movies that I forgot about, and so it got thrown in later in the in the draft, so probably should have been seated a little higher, and you wouldn't have had this matchup, but that being said, it is what it is, so. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes you gotta let them fight it out, and that's what it's doing. Yeah. Anyway, we got some we got some bang up matchups. Uh, second round's gonna be. I had fun tough. right there. Second round's gonna, gonna be, be tough. I can't wait to do the second round. I'm already looking forward to it. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. So, we'll uh we'll see how the votes play out. Voting closes on Thursday, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep this train rolling. George, it's always a good time, man. Always a good Great time. Great to talk to you guys, dude. You, thanks for kindling. Lay, well, I think we Friday might be bad because I'm having my special sale. Let's touch base again Monday. Sounds good. A week from today. Get a good big update on everything. That'll work. We'll uh, we'll try this again uh, Monday evening. That's, uh, that's what we're shooting for. And um, until then, George, sign us off, man. Well, until then, let's let's get our asses moving. We're burning daylight, and I want to sleep. There's no <laughs> daylight outside. <laughs>